Fitted with well-sloped chobham armour, ammunition stowage in the rear turret bustle, automatic fire extinguishers, and a complete NBC protection system, Abrams is the first really new American main battle tank since the end of World War II. Propulsion is by means of a high-performance 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine, which gives easy starting under the coldest weather conditions and a high power-to-weight ratio. Unfortunately, the engine runs very hot while idling, producing a high infrared signature for the enemy to detect. The 120mm gun on the M1A1 has an integrated fire control system with laser range finding and fully automatic stabilization, and everything else you could expect in a modern main battle tank. First round hit and kill capability is thus almost assured. The Abrams has a power to weight ratio and cross country performance virtually identical to those of the Leopard 2, partly as a result of the American and West German government's cooperation during the early design stages. Top speed is about 45 miles per hour. Trench and vertical obstacle capabilities are also just about the same as that of the Leopard 2. Range is over 300 miles. The Abrams carries its own internal smoke screen generator. The only thing the Abrams lacks is the Leopard's deep fording ability. The Abrams saw extensive combat during the Gulf War and was generally accompanied by Bradley infantry combat vehicles. Cooperating with helicopter gunships, the night fighting capability of the Abrams was vividly demonstrated. Combat engineers cleared paths through the extensive minefields and ramparts. Then the coalition forces raced forward to exploit the element of surprise. With the first lines of defences breached, vast convoys of armoured vehicles poured into Kuwait and Iraq. Within hours, the desert was littered with the burning wrecks of Iraqi T-55 and T-72 tanks. The British main battle tank Mark III is a comparatively recent development by Vickers of the original cheaper Chieftain. Companies such as Vickers Defence Systems have a long tradition of private ventures and British industry is constantly producing new developments, which the government of the day doesn't want or can't afford. Industry also appreciates that the stringent requirements of NATO are not always required by other countries. The MBT Mark III has the same basic turret as the Indian Army's Vijayanta. A new hull with a more powerful 900 horsepower Perkins diesel engine gives improved cross-country performance. Produced for export only, it does not have Chobham armor protection and retains the 105mm L7 gun. The Vickers MBT Mark 7 Stroke 2 could be described as a lightweight challenger and shares many of the same characteristics, including the basic hull and turret shape. It comes fitted with Chobham armor as standard and can mount either the L11 or the Rhein Metall 120mm smoothbore gun. Weighing some 10 tons less than Challenger, it is powered by a German MTU diesel engine giving a top speed of about 45 miles per hour. The British Army's Challenger is arguably the most powerful tank in the world today, 
just as the chieftain was before it. Work had begun on a successor to the chieftain as soon as it started entering service, but was abandoned. By this time, though, an improved chieftain was in production for export to Iran. When the Shah was toppled by the Ayatollahs, the British Army was able to buy these tanks, renamed Challenger. The first difference between Chieftain and Challenger lies in the latter's 1,200 horsepower diesel engine. This is considerably more powerful than the 750 horsepower Leyland L60 power pack, so although the Challenger is some seven tons heavier than the Chieftain, it is more mobile. Top speed is given as 35 miles per hour, but the range has not been disclosed. The increased power, coupled to a new hydro gas suspension system, gives a greater reliability and a smoother ride. Original main armament was the same 120 mm L11A5 as on the Chieftain. This means both tanks share the same ammunition. A new high pressure 120 mm rifled gun has since been retrofitted. The Challenger was the first tank in the world to be fitted with the revolutionary Chobham armor, which provides protection equal to four times the thickness of conventional hardened steel, but weighs considerably less. As you would expect, Challenger's gun is fully stabilized to permit accurate firing while on the move. This is a fully integrated fire control system and laser rangefinder, and Challenger has been retrofitted with TOGS, the thermal observation and gunnery system for night firing. Secondary armament comprises a coaxial and an anti-aircraft machine gun. Conventional smoke dischargers have been replaced by a new system which protects the tank from infrared as well as visual observation. The high mobility of such a heavy armed and armoured vehicle unquestionably makes it one of the best tanks in the world, if not the best. Again, during the war in the Gulf, the Challenger proved its worth. As reinforcements moved north, there was no need for concealment, for the Iraqi Air Force had been conspicuous by its absence. After a pause to check maps, officers returned to their vehicles to resume the advance. Britain deployed the 1st Armoured Division to the Gulf from its bases in West Germany. The division included over 170 Challengers, as well as heavy artillery, the multiple launch rocket system, warrior armoured personnel carriers and light reconnaissance armoured vehicles. As Operation Desert Storm began, the 1st Division moved into Iraq and then Kuwait alongside the US 3rd Armoured and 1st Infantry Divisions. The Challenger tanks and Warrior APCs advanced with Lynx helicopter gunships overhead. There was no hiding place for the Iraqi army, even at night. Within 100 hours, Kuwait had been liberated. What about the future? The tank is constantly evolving and the next generation for the year 2000 and beyond 
may look radically different. The idea of the turretless tank is becoming something of a vogue. The crew would all sit in the well-protected fighting compartment while directing the gun, which would have full 360-degree traverse in a small, unmanned cupola. The tank would be driven and the gun aimed and fired by means of panoramic zoom lens video cameras coupled to a laser rangefinder and computerized control systems. An automatic loader would be essential. Given this sort of configuration, the gun could possibly be given enough elevation to allow it to double as an anti-aircraft weapon. But this would mean finding room in the vehicle for target acquisition and tracking radars or optronic sensors. The ultimate tank may in fact be entirely unmanned, a robot vehicle, remotely controlled by a crew sitting safely in a bunker miles away. Though there is still no real replacement for the man on the spot. Thank you.